Jacques Ellul was a French philosopher, law professor, sociologist, lay theologian, and Christian anarchist. Ellul was a long-time professor of history and the sociology of institutions on the Faculty of Law and Economic Sciences at the University of Bordeaux. A prolific writer, he authored 58 books and more than a thousand articles over his lifetime, many of which discussed propaganda the impact of technology on society, and the interaction between religion and politics. The dominant theme of his work proved to be the threat to human freedom and religion created by modern technology. Among his most influential books are The Technological Society and Propaganda, The Formation of Men's Attitudes. Considered by many a philosopher, Elul was by training a sociologist who approached the question of technology and human action from a dialectical viewpoint. His constant concern was the emergence of a technological tyranny over humanity. As a philosopher and theologian, he further explored the religiosity of the technological society. In 2000 the International Jacques Elul Society was founded by a group of former Elul students. The society, which includes scholars from a variety of disciplines, is devoted to continuing Elul's legacy and discussing the contemporary relevance and implications of his work, life and influences. Jacques Ellul was born in Bordeaux, France on 6 January 1912 to Marta Mendez and Joseph Ellul. As a teenager he wanted to be a naval officer but his father made him read law. He married Yvette Lenzvelt in 1937. Ellul was educated at the universities of Bordeaux and Paris. In World War II, he was a leader in the French resistance. For his efforts to save Jews he was awarded the title Righteous Among the Nations by Yad Vashem in 2001. He was a layman in the Reformed Church of France and attained a higher position within it as part of the National Council. Elul was best friends with Bernard Charbonneau, who wrote on similar themes. They met through the Protestant Student Federation during the academic school year of 1929-30. By the early 1930s, Elul's three primary sources of inspiration were Karl Marx, Soren Kierkegaard, and Karl Barth. Elul was first introduced to the ideas of Karl Marx during an economics lecture course taught by Joseph Benzikar in 1929-30. Elul studied Marx and became a prolific exegetor of his theories. During this same period, he also came across the Christian existentialism of Kierkegaard. According to Elul, Marx and Kierkegaard were his two greatest influences, and the only two authors of which he read all of their work. Also, he considered Karl Barth, who was a leader of the resistance against the German state church in World War II, the greatest theologian of the 20th century. In addition to these intellectual influences, Elul also said that his father played a great role in his life and considered him his role model. These ideological influences earned him both devoted followers and vicious enemies. In large measure, and especially in those of his books concerned with theological matters, Elul restates the viewpoints held by Bath whose polar dialectic of the Word of God, in which the Gospel both judges and renews the world, shaped Elul's theological perspective. In Jacques Elul, a systemic exposition Darrell J. Fashing claimed Elul believed that which desacralizes a given reality, itself in turn becomes the new sacred reality. In 1932, after what he describes as a very brutal and very sudden conversion, Elul professed himself a Christian. Elul believes he was about 17 and spending the summer with some friends in Blancfort, France. While translating Faust alone in the house, Elul knew he was in the presence of a something so astounding, so overwhelming, which entered the very center of his being. He jumped on a bike and fled, concluding eventually that he had been in the presence of God. This experience started the conversion process which Elul said then continued over a period of years thereafter. He was also prominent in the worldwide ecumenical movement. Although he later became sharply critical of the movement for what he felt were indiscriminate endorsements of political establishments, primarily of the left, 
However, he was no friendlier in his assessment of those of the right. He fashioned an explicitly anti-political stance as an alternative to both. Elul has been credited with coining the phrase, think globally, act locally. He often said that he was born in Bordeaux by chance, but that it was by choice that he spent almost all his academic career there. On 19 May 1994, after a long illness, he died in his house in Pessac, just a mile or two from the University of Bordeaux campus and surrounded by those closest to him. His wife had died a few years prior, on 16 April 1991. Theology While Elul is perhaps most noted for his sociological work, especially his discussions of technology, he saw his theological work as an essential aspect of his career and began publishing theological discussions early. With such books his The Presence of the Kingdom, although a son of the minority French Reformed tradition and thus a spiritual heir of thinkers like John Calvin and Ulrich Zwingli, Elul departed substantially from Reformed doctrinal traditions, but unlike other European Protestant thinkers, utterly rejected the influence of philosophical idealism or Romanticism upon his beliefs about God and human faith. In articulating his theological ideas, he mainly drew upon the corpus of works by the Swiss-German theologian Karl Barth and the critiques of European state Christianity made by Dane Soren Kierkegaard. Thus, some have considered him one of the more ardent expositors of dialectical theology, which was in decline elsewhere in the Western theological scene during Elul's heyday. Much like Barth, Elul had no use for either liberal theology or orthodox Protestantism and maintained a roughly uncatholic view of the Bible, theology, and the churches. One particular theological movement that aroused his ire was death of God theology. Some within this movement held the conviction that the traditional Christian conceptions of God and humanity arise from a primitive consciousness one that most civilized people have quite overcome. This line of thought affirmed the ethical teachings of Jesus but rejected the idea that he represented anything more than a highly accomplished human being. Elul attacked this school and practitioners of it such as Harvey Cox as out of accord not with Christian doctrinal traditions but reality itself, namely what he perceived as the irreducible religiosity of the human race, a devotion that has worshipped titles such as rulers, nations, and in more recent times, materialism, scientism, technology and economics. To Elul, people use such fallen images, or powers, as a substitute for God, and a, in turn, used by them, with no possible appeal to innocence or neutrality, which, although possible theoretically, does not in fact exist. Elul thus renovates in a non-legalistic manner the traditional Christian understanding of original sin and espouses a thoroughgoing pessimism about human capabilities a view most sharply evidenced in his meaning of the city. Elul stated that one of the problems with these new theologies was, Elul espouses views on salvation, the sovereignty of God, and ethical action that appear to take a deliberately contrarian stance toward established mainstream opinion. For instance, in the book What I Believe, he declared himself to be a Christian universalist writing, that all people from the beginning of time are saved by God in Jesus Christ, that they have all been recipients of his grace no matter what they have done. Elul formulated this stance not from any liberal or humanistic sympathies, but in the main from an extremely high view of God's transcendence, that God is totally free to do what God pleases. Any attempts to modify that freedom from merely human standards of righteousness and justice amount to sin, to putting oneself in God's place, which is precisely what Adam and Eve sought to do in the creation myths in Genesis. This highly unusual juxtaposition of original sin and universal salvation has repelled liberal and conservative critics and commentators alike who charge that such views amount to antinomianism, denying that God's laws are binding upon human beings. 
In most of his theologically oriented writings, Elul effectively dismisses those charges as stemming from a radical confusion between religions as human phenomena and the unique claims of the Christian faith, which are not predicated upon human achievement or moral integrity whatsoever. On technique, the Elulian concept of technique is briefly defined within the notes to reader section of the technological society. It is the totality of methods rationally arrived at and having absolute efficiency in every field of human activity. He states here as well that the term technique is not solely machines, technology, or a procedure used to attain an end. What many consider to be Elul's most important work, the Technological Society was originally titled La Technique, La du Sicli. In it, Elul set forth seven characteristics of modern technology that make efficiency a necessity, rationality, artificiality, automatism of technical choice, self-augmentation, monism, universalism, and autonomy. The rationality of technique enforces logical and mechanical organization through division of labor, the setting of production standards, etc., and it creates an artificial system which eliminates or subordinates the natural world regarding technology. Instead of it being subservient to humanity, human beings have to adapt to it and accept total change. As an example, Elul offered the diminished value of the humanities to a technological society. As people begin to question the value of learning ancient languages and history, they question those things which, on the surface, do little to advance their financial and technical state. According to Elul, this misplaced emphasis is one of the problems with modern education, as it produces a situation in which immense stress is placed on information in our schools. The focus in those schools is to prepare young people to enter the world of information, to be able to work with computers but knowing only their reasoning, their language, their combinations, and the connections between them. This movement is invading the whole intellectual domain and also that of conscience. Elul's commitment to scrutinize technological development is expressed as such. The sacred then, as classically defined, is the object of both hope and fear, both fascination and dread. Once, nature was the all-encompassing environment and power upon which human beings were dependent in life and death and so was experienced his sacred. The Reformation desacralized the church in the name of the Bible, and the Bible became the sacred book. But since then, scientism and reason have desacralized the scriptures and the sciences, particularly those applied sciences that are amenable to the aims of collective economic production, have been elevated to the position of sacred in Western culture. Today, he argues, the technological society is generally held sacred, since he defines technique as the totality of methods rationally arrived at and having absolute efficiency in every field of human activity. It is clear that his sociological analysis focuses not on the society of machines as such, but on the society of efficient techniques. It is useless, he argues, to think that a distinction can be made between technique and its use, for techniques have specific social and psychological consequences independent of human desires. There can be no room for moral considerations in their use. On anarchy and violence, Elul identified himself as a Christian anarchist. Elul explained his view in this way. By anarchy I mean first an absolute rejection of violence, and Jesus was not only a socialist but an anarchist, and I want to stress here that I regard anarchism as the fullest and most serious form of socialism for him. This meant that nation, states, as the primary sources of violence in the modern era, should neither be praised nor feared, but continually questioned and challenged. For Elul, human government is largely irrelevant in that the revelation of God contained in Scripture is sufficient and exclusive. That is, being a Christian means pledging absolute allegiance to Christ, which makes other laws redundant at best or counter to the revelation of God at worst. Despite the initial attraction of some evangelicals to his thinking because of his high view of biblical texts, this position alienated some conservative Protestants. 
Later, he would attract a following among adherents of more ethically compatible traditions such as the Anabaptists and the House Church movement. Similar political ideas to Ellul's appear in the writings of a corresponding friend of his, the American William Stringfellow, and longtime admirer of Ernard Eller, author of Christian Anarchy. Elul identified the state and political power as the beast in the Book of Revelation. Jacques Elul discusses anarchy on a few pages in The Ethics of Freedom and in more detail within his later work, Anarchy and Christianity. Although he does admit that anarchy does not seem to be a direct expression of Christian freedom, he concludes that the absolute power he sees within the current nation-state can only be responded to with an absolute negative position. He states that his intention is not to establish an anarchist society or the total destruction of the state. His initial point in anarchy in Christianity is that he is led toward anarchy by his commitment to an absolute rejection of violence. However, Elul does not entertain the idea that all Christians in all places and all times will refrain from violence. Rather, he insisted that violence could not be reconciled with the God of love, and thus, true freedom. A Christian that chooses the path of violence must admit that he or she is abandoning the path of freedom and committing to the way of necessity. During the Spanish Civil War Spanish anarchist friends of Elul's soon-to-be wife came to France in search of weapons. He tried to get some for them through an old school friend of his and claimed that this was probably the one time in his life when he was sufficiently motivated to commit an act of violence. He did not go with the anarchists primarily because he had only recently met the woman that would become his wife and did not wish to leave her. Elul states in the subversion of Christianity that he thinks that the biblical teaching is clear. It always contests political power. It incites to counterpower, to positive criticism, to an irreducible dialogue, to anti-statism, to a decentralizing of the relation to an extreme relativizing of everything political, to an anti-ideology, to a questioning of all that claims either power or dominion, and finally, if we may use a modern term, to a kind of anarchism, Elil states in violence that idealism serves to justify the use of violence, including revolutionary idealism, generous idealism, 3. pacifist idealism, 4. Christian idealism, this leads to concepts of progressiveness and unreserved participation with good conscience in political or scientific action. In their idyllic world, harshness, torture, and war seem abnormal and almost incomprehensible. But it is only gross, highly visible, undeniable violence that evokes this scandalized reaction.